This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, it's Jared Morgan. Hello, everybody. How you all going? How are you going, Chris? Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, then. Well, yeah, well, you know, here's the deal. Um, been in the house uh, 19 years, mm. and turns out that appliances don't want to last much longer than that and 19 years no they don't like yeah. the fact you got 19 years out of it is pretty good mate come on um like. and and they've all decided to start <laughs> crapping out at the same time <laughs> yeah that's what they do yeah so yeah. um yeah. it well like it started with our dishwasher um where just the little latch that opens up for the soap mm. decided to not work anymore now, the yeah. dishwasher for a while hasn't been actually doing the best cleaning job, and it was in the house prior to us buying it. So, Lord well, knows okay. how old that dishwasher actually is. It's 20-plus years, for sure. D decades old. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so, now we've just been taking the little you know, soap tabs and throwing it into the bottom of the dishwasher and running it and figuring, hey. It's honestly the best way to do it. Like, I don't know why, if you're not using powder or anything, like, I've been told by a person who I, you know, I've replaced all my appliances here mm -hmm. at this place. And he said, yeah, look, we just like get the little dishwasher packs, throw them into the bottom. You don't need to use the, the door. In fact, the door will actually, uh, those dissolvable ones, sometimes they fall weird. They don't dissolve. Yeah. And you end up doing a wash for nothing. So you just chuck them in the bottom and they'll sort themselves out. So you're doing the right thing there. But, you know, that being said, like, the dishwasher rack is, you know, some of the posts have rusted off. Rust. <laughs> um, oh, you know, oh, wow, rusted off It doesn't completely. open easily. Nothing gets dried properly. I mean, it's ancient, right? It's like, pretty knackered, yeah. as we would say here in Australia. Um, <laughs> but we were dealing with it. And then yeah. go to uh, dry and close the other day, and the little thing is saying it's going to take 70 minutes to dry the clothes. I was like, what happened to the typical 37 minutes? Interesting. And then even after mm. that time clothes were coming out slightly damp so i'm hmm so go outside while the dryer's running put my hand near the vent and then put my hand cool air. under the vent it's just cool air <laughs> like crap there ain't no heating there's no heating happening here so then my <laughs> wife immediately is just like uh is it something you can fix and i quickly looked on a youtube video and i went i'm not touching those electronics i mean it's like mm. possibly an 11 dollar part but the guy's whipping out his multimeter and telling you to turn off the power. I'm just like, no, I'm not messing mm. with an appliance. And so then she's like, well, how much is the, uh, you know, service going to be? I'm like, I don't know, 50, 50 below 100 bucks probably. She's like, oh, okay. So I continue to do some drying. And also I hear this big loud clunking noise. I'm like, what the hell is that? Open up the dryer. Oh. Yeah, you know, one of the fins, the tumble fins, has snapped off and it was just yeah. tumbling in there too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really trying to tell you that you need to replace yeah, it right? at which at which point my wife is like well i guess we're getting a new dryer and she goes well we might as well get a new washer at the same time since we bought those both at the same time i'm like now we're like doubling the cost of what that's gonna be but it's actually it's true and i your wife's got the right idea unfortunately even uh, yeah, though it costs heaps of money and you know, there's something to be said for replacing everything at the same time because anything you have, it you've got to know in baseline with everything then, right? Yes. And, you know, okay, I know when my warranties, warranties start, when they're finished, how old the appliances are because I actually installed them myself um, or got them installed. And I did that with my oven. As my oven crapped out. It just stopped heating. And, yeah, you know, I probably could have just got a new element for it, but the cooktop was all gross as well and all the knobs were cracked and... Um, the dishwasher was a real cheap model that was really noisy. And I went, you know what? I'm just getting Bosch. Bosch everything. And I just replaced it all. And I have no regrets because everything is new, modern. It's probably more energy efficient. And oh, for sure. Energy efficient. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. By the way, way our oven crapped out like two years ago. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and so. that was a fun one because it's a built-in gas double Stacked oven. Double oven. Which oh, yeah. we then found out that they stopped making those like 10 or 15 years ago. Right. So I can't get a double gas in that spot. I could only get electric. But in order to do that, I would then need to get rewiring done into my kitchen because I'm wired for 
I don't have that kind of uh, power. Uh, you don't have the 15 in. amps you need for the. Uh, oven. Yeah, I think it's 220, yeah. 220 for us. Um, and uh, yeah, so we just bought a little Cuisinart air fryer <laughs> instead of been dealing with that. Also, that's how you've been doing. Yeah, you know, I tell you what. Uh, as far as appliances go, I use my air fryer more than I use my oven. Yeah, it's the, it's such a good little invention. Like if you don't have one, you are missing out, folks. Yeah, and that's not no, to yeah, mention the fact that uh, I think I mentioned before I need to get new iPhones because Verizon sent us a message saying, "By the way, those iPhone five S's that you have, we have two of them." Um, mm. Yeah, we're not supporting those come uh, January because they don't have the. We're Software shutting off the, the network that runs on those. So I'm also... Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, everything is um, getting Just... real expensive real fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hard. Like, it, it always happens in threes too, doesn't it? Oh, God, like, yeah. Always. You can never escape it. And I'm surprised that when your oven decided to die... Um, couple of years ago it they all didn't die then because they talk to each other don't they like they go all right i'm broken now and that's your your turn to break quickly now yeah we we had our this was another fun one we had our um this was a few years back maybe five or so uh our refrigerator crapped out on us and we Mm. were like okay that was fine we didn't even buy it we'd gotten it from somebody else um Mm. or excuse me yeah we'd gotten some from somebody else we're like, well, yeah, we'll get a new refrigerator. Well, then we discover that the cabinets that we have that go above the refrigerator, yeah, um, yeah since the time those were installed, refrigerators have gotten taller. And yes, none, they and, have. And none of them fit in the spot that we have. So we'd have to remove cabinets. So you got to, like, rip out the door, rip out the cabinet. Yeah. yeah. I could see that that happened to someone here where I live. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they, there is a cabinet above the, the, uh, the fridge. Um, but they chose to get a fridge that was just a titch bigger than yeah. that cabinet, and so there's no bottom on the on the uh, cupboard that's above the fridge anymore, which is a bit annoying because my fridge I deliberately got to fit the height of the the actual existing cabinet. Yeah. Um, because you know you can get French door fridges that have the same sort of size, but have the big sure. swing out door. Because I've got like a space a door swing limit um in my kitchen as well. So, you know, you can get them. You just, you know, have to actually spend a little bit more money to buy them. And I think this is why the people who used to live in this house didn't do that because they were tight. So, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, never mind. Don't want to deal with it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. So, anyway, that's, yeah. um, that's why I'm saying, okay, but yeah, good, but not good for the wallet. Yeah. Yeah. Not good for the wallet yeah. at all. Not good for the wallet <laughs> at all. Just be thankful you don't have to actually get these things installed, like as in new PowerPoints or new fittings or anything like that, or sure. like modifications to cabinets. Because I've had to go through that with my kitchen. Because, um, you know, the 20 year old kitchen, um, yeah, stuff is no longer compliant. Like if I've got a gas cooktop, um, you have to have like 650 millimeter clearance between the top, like, part of the element yeah. to the cabinetry above in Australia. Otherwise, it's not compliant. So I had to get my entire like section of my cabinetry modified so I could actually install a new gas cooktop, even though there was a there was a gas cooktop there already. Um, but I had to go and get it modified so it would I could actually get a signed-off gas mm-hmm. certificate. And it's like, well, that, that was $1,000. Thanks <laughs> very much. Because, you know, there's a PowerPoint in that little alcove that needs to be taken off and then uh, redesigned, and they had to like you know cut the cabinet. And then you know I had a range hood as part of the package, so they had to put that range hood in, duct it. So yeah. like the it, the thousand dollars was fair enough. It was how much it cost to do that work, but it's sort of like wow, that's an extra cost over the you know the five grand right. that I had to spend on the package to yeah. actually get all the cookware. It's like yeah. wow, okay, Whew. yeah. Open yep. your open Good your times. wallet thousand dollar <laughs> increments when you have a house, right? That's how it works. Pretty much. Um, mm. All right, so let's uh, let's move on to actual uh, things because we have things to talk about today. Stuff and things. Yeah. Um, Our favorite. <laughs> apparently, there's been a game uh, on Apple for some time that I hadn't paid attention mm. to. I think I like noticed it a while ago, like coming and never bothered downloading, and then. Uh, it just came out onto Android, and so Jared posted about it, and I was like, 
hey, should we maybe do a thing about this? Okay, and fine. I said, uh, yeah, we definitely should. We'll do a thing so, about this. So I actually found this out because I don't really do a lot of um, Android gaming anymore. It's mostly PC. Yeah. So I actually found this out through the newly revamped uh, Digital Pinball Fans Forum. Um, Graham, uh, who is the new owner of the forum, is actually doing a really great job um, doing little tidbits of information through the Twitter account for the forum. So if you haven't, you're on Twitter and you want to get some nice little um, updates about um, digital pinball between the episodes that we do, um, absolutely subscribe to um, the Digital Pinball Fans um, Forum Twitter because uh, I found out that they released um, uh, inks uh, through uh, uh, of Android um, yeah, through the forum. So it was really good. Um, so I installed it. I thought, I don't, I don't know. This sort of thing is always... I quite like this style of... Yeah, by the um, way, we didn't say... Well, I mean, Jerry just said the name. Inks! That's the game we're going to be talking about. Inks. <laughs> yep. Yeah, been out for ages on iOS. Yeah. Um, and when I saw it... When I saw it first released on uh, iOS, I was like, wow, that looks really good. But, you know, there was no word at all that was coming out of Android. Um but yeah, now it's out. I can see what the hype was about. And we're going to actually show you what that's all about. Yeah, we're going to take a look at this. Um, figured that uh, this is, you know, now and then we'll actually talk about a, a mobile game. <laughs> a good mobile game. So um, this mobile game was, it was produced um, by uh, a studio I'd never heard before. Um, but it was released by a studio I have heard of before and we've actually done some of their games before which is noodle cake studios oh, okay. so i'm pretty sure noodle cake were the ones responsible for um snowball and um a few other games of this ilk as well so they're the publisher in this case okay um but yeah this is the the interface for it it's very it's i would describe this if i had to put it into a category as chill pinball um, yeah, you might say it's kind of like when we talk about <clears throat> Pinout. That was the mm. name of that one, right? Yeah, Pinout. Pinout, yeah. yeah. Um, that being said, I like this one better. Just saying. I This one has a really simple aesthetic to you, which we'll see as we start playing it. So in um, each category, you've got all sorts of boards. And I'm just going to play the very most first basic one to show you what this is. Um, yeah. Really simple rule set, which is... You want to hit all of the colors and splatter their their uh, ink, you might say. Yeah. And once you do that, you clear the level. Just like that. Just like that. So that seems and... very easy. But then all of a sudden you get like variations where we'll go to here. Hey, look, now there's bumpers. So you got to avoid the bumpers avoid and the sharpshoot. Bumpers. And I'm not hearing the audio, unfortunately. I know Jerry. Yeah, I'm never not. Hears well, I'm. I'm never hearing the audio, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's but it's, it, it's very chill audio. It is, and it's um the if if it doesn't end up coming through, the audio is very similar to um, EM chimes and and soft yeah. tones, and it's all there's no music in the game. It's just the sound of the elements in the table and. When you pop the ink in the table, it's got a really satisfying sound to it. It's got a really splooshy sound to it. Splooshy. It's splooshy. Um, and the, the real, as you can see with um, Chris, some of Chris's um, past attempts here, um, each, the, the idea behind the, the game is that you're actually creating sort of art when you're playing pinball here. Um, and... It's really, it's really interesting to see how the colors blend and sort of amalgamate with each other to make the different tones and stuff on the play field. It sounds weird because you're going, well, this is a pinball game. Why are we looking at the colors? But it's, a, it's sort of like a, a key mechanic of the game. The fun the part is seeing the ball trails because you realize... The ball trails are really fun. Um, how often you'll hit the exact same angle. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And when you go over the ink pads it, and it refreshes the ball's... Um, ink pad essentially Oops. you get these nice little draw scribble patterns around there and each one of these tables or play fields you can actually share 
um, online. It, they're like a shareable thing. So you can share your pinball art um, after you've played a table if it looks really interesting. But the the mechanic in this one is um, interesting. Yeah, so Chris has showed you with this particular one what happens when you do a lot of shots. You get like different rankings. So the, the one we got there is like a one. Um, so that's like a a ranking that says, yeah, you've done an all right job, but it's not flawless. But to get a like a the, the top rank for it, you've got to do what he just did then, which is get all one the shot. <laughs> one shots. So on each, I've worked out how they actually judge you. You get like that star award that he's got there. So on the ones that you... Um, uh, that you do one shot it's it's basically on each pad section so in this one here it's possible to go do um two pads at once if you sharpshoot it um but uh chris is going for the one pad per ball so he's going to get a a one ranking here oh. if he actually manages to get the um the other ones oh. but you can't you can actually go and um, get a like a star ranking on it if you use the aiming power ups um, as well. That helps you sort of hit two pads at once. So there are power ups in this game, which I've oh hey found. the sound just kicked in. <laughs> oh good. Hey hello. Oh oh and then the uh, black hole just got me. Yeah, the black um, hole just got you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it's got the, the it's got some classic old school play field elements like bubble holes and stuff like that hey good shot on that black hole there Chris. yeah I'm really, really accurate yeah yeah really um, good on the black to, hole to be fair i'm looking at my uh, the oh that black hole wants your ball uh, and then and once, you, how once the... you've done really bad you just get a black ball <laughs> yeah you just get black so your ball changes color every time you drain Come on. and um and now you're just black yeah yeah you've now I'm, I'm basically ball. failed I'm going to look at yep. the, the phone itself and see if that helps. Nope, that didn't help at all. Nope. <laughs> and now it's just drawing black lines everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yay. Oh, you got it. I got and it. You drained. But Which, oh, now you got to... I got to drain and drain. I love it how it sucks it in like a vortex. Yeah. And it look at that. I, got some... a, I didn't even get a ranking. Oh, you got a black? I you got, got a, a black, black ranking. ranking. <laughs> Oh, it's that's a bit You brutal. suck. I'm surprised there's not a um, uh, an achievement because the other thing in this game is and probably with iOS as well. It plugs into the iOS Game Center and the yeah. Android Play Games um, in a, uh, like API, and there are awards that you get um, through the game, like um, you know so how many is... pads you popped and stuff. This one is particularly brutal. So show them the po the power ups. Yeah, well, I've never so... actually used the power ups. I just know that there is a uh, the bumper stop. Uh, that goes in between, and then I yeah. don't know what that uh, flipper one. The is. red thing is a sharpshooter mode. It actually has a target that, like a wave of laser light that goes across the playfield. Oh, interesting. And um, it helps you shoot the shots. Now on Android, at least in the levels I've played, there's no limit on each of the shots, so you can use them as much as you want. Oh, okay. So um, I want to but... show this particular board because I take a look at it, folks. Particularly that center uh, shot. Okay, yeah. I'm try and hit it if I can. Because I want to show. All right, so that one, hey, look at that. It's nice. It feeds back down again. Back down. Oh, good Ooh. shock. And Chris is doing those last three shots on the fly, too, which is no mean feat. Oh, all right. Now you just got one more to do. Oh, there we go. Nice. Okay, so I should get a one for. Oh, I got a two for that. Yeah, I got a two for that. Okay. So we see that no. board, but then look at this board and look at that center. It's yeah. an automatic center drain. It's an instant center drain. <laughs> Which means you cannot say that it. is what you have to then hit last. If you yeah. wanna, if you wanna do it. Actually, that's a that is a really good point. If you don't use power ups, I didn't think of it that way. I guess because, you know, you're not getting uh, a limit on the power up. Um, but it, there is a strategy element, which is a good point you raise here. Jared uh, swears Chris. you can do a post pass. I don't believe him. You can. Well, you can on Android. Oh, look at there that. There you go. I did do it. Look, okay. There you go. Achievement unlocked. You. There's actually an achievement that you actually get. Oh, you drain. Oh. <laughs> <I> drain. <laughs> yeah. 
And there's a so this is where they introduce the first power up or the second power up, which is the um the the lane blocker. So uh, but I think your your call is right there, Chris. You've got to actually do that that center one last, and that'll get you the um the thing. I didn't think of that um as a. There we go. There we go. So there is, you do have to plan your shots in this. And yeah, you do. There's a smidgen <clears throat> of a puzzle element to it. There is. There, there is definitely um, a, let's um, see what happens. a puzzle element. I haven't tried down here at the bottom. Let's see what this is. Oh, wow. Look at this thing. That looks like Wow. Nice. This looks like it's going to be a little bit hard. This would be the last level of this. Of this particular yeah. grouping of tables. So if I had to guess, the idea is to... Utilize the bumpers as well as you can. I think it's all about letting the, bu the bumpers juggle your ball around everywhere. And I would think that maybe even... I was going to say, would you do a loop here and then try and drop it in the top? There we go. Yeah, that's, that's what you want. A bit of bumper action. Okay, let's try that doing a loop again. You might be able to backhand it as well. I tried. Off, off that. So as soon as it hits a color, it bounces it back. There we go. Yep. Oh, That's shoot. Which good. one did mine not? Oh, I see it. It's that yellow in the upper left. That's right. Yeah, you got to shoot it through the bumpers, which is no mean feat. It's quite a tight shot. And this is where... Um, oh, you nearly had it. This is where the uh, sharpshooter um, power-up oh, would bet. come in quite handy. Because it really helps you snipe those really hard to hard to work out. Oh, nice shot. Yeah, very good. So see how on that one before you um, yeah. cancel it, see how the all the ink packs that you hit in the game, they're not just like regular colors. They're actually watercolored style and they they blend just like paint. It's actually really quite beautiful to see what happens to your playfield after you've popped them all. And each time you play, depending on how you've actually popped things and the velocity at which you pop the um, the ink packs on the playfield determines how far the ink spreads and whether it spatters and stuff like that. So there's a real, they've really focused on the, the physics of the ink pack uh, in this game. And it's just really quite satisfying to, to play. Yeah, so I mean, like I said, if you look further, hey, look at that, whole different stuff. Well, there's of... some brutal, brutal looking layouts in that. <laughs> right? Wow. Looks like there's some yeah. ramps in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so heaps of heaps of opportunities to challenge yourself in in this game, and like you have a look at all these like playfields. There's how many playfields would you think there are in each one? There's three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, uh, twenty-four. I think in each collection. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, twenty-four. And, and there's one, two, one, three. Four, five, five collections. Collections. So. so, doing the math, twenty-four times five. Everyone in the comments, you tell us how much that is. Uh, um, it's like hundred. I'm gonna say one thirty-two. I don't know. I don't have a calculator. Sure, it's over a hundred. Over. Put it this way, it's definitely it's over, over one hundred. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I think. So that's a lot of that's yeah. a lot of gameplay, and I think there's um quite a bit of repeat repeatability and like going back and just trying to get those. That the perfect score on each table in here and it's actually i really do get the sense of it being sort of one more go oh, i can do it this time like uh, there's right. definitely a oh oh the, for sure yeah absolutely it's really really well paced and so I'll look i have to say i'm so glad that noodle cake um uh were able to publish this game out to android it's been sorely missing like good quality pinball games are always missing from the android store it's usually junk as I, as I covered ages ago in my "Is this actually pinball?" segment on the show, <laughs> um, and uh, so it's great to see this level of quality coming to the Android um, uh, App Store and uh, the Google Play Store, and it's it's a really satisfying game for me in Australia. I think it was five bucks, and, and for me, it's buck uh, ninety nine on the Apple Store, or if you have Apple Arcade, it's free. It's free. There you go. You can't argue with free. Yeah. So if you're already game, doing, if you're already uh, doing, doing Zen Apple Pinball Arcade Party for Zen's Pinball Party, grab this. This is free game. for you. Yep. And you should absolutely give it a go in that case because yeah, you got nothing to lose with this game. It's great. Yeah. So would would what would you give this out of five if you had to rate it? 
Well, I mean, literally, uh, I've I, I've had less than 24 hours with it. <laughs> mm. So it's hard for me to do that. Um, like I said, I like it better than uh, Pinout. Um, it's a little more satisfying. Mm. In terms of, you know, obviously it's not, tr- I'm not going to say it's not true pinball, but it's not the pinball we're all used to. So do I like it less than Zen's offerings? Yeah, because... You know, those have, I believe, infinitely more playability to them. Oh yeah, this this is definitely um, not a contender to try and trump. No, <laughs> but if, but if you studios off their dead the top tier at the moment. Yeah, but I mean, if you were to, uh, I'm going to say, if you were to remove Zen from the equation and just have it compared to other basic pinball apps that are out there, I'd throw it at the top of the heap of those. Mm. Um, in which case I'm going to say I'm just going to give it a 4.5 4.5 out of 5 it's not a 5 it's not it's, a 5 no so but I think pretty. that it, it's it's pretty good Um, and I think uh, I'm the same it's I've only had it for I think 3 days now and I tried to put a bit of gameplay time into it each day leading up to this show so I could sort of really understand what the, the go was yeah um and i think um it's i i always have liked pin out like i love this it's aesthetic and i like the the graphics and audio treatment that that game has it's really good um the thing that did let it down were the the flipper physics they were very much uh specific to that game yes and it's a it's a bit of a shame. Like, there's definitely like slow down when the ball hits the the flipper in pinout. Whereas this one, unless you have a power up on, it doesn't. Like, it's pretty much the the ball is wild most of the time on the play field, um, and that's a really good. That sort of it's not meant to be real. This game either. It's not a simulation. No, but like and pinout. The frustration that- with that was that. You'd sometimes lose the ball to a lower board and then to a lower board, and and you felt like you were. It, it felt a little temple runnish, <laughs> you might say. Where oh, like a, it was yeah. all about progressing forward, not about perfecting a board. Um, That's right. Yeah, you actually the goal was to get um, essentially the stars or whatever the mechanic was in that game orbs. Uh, and that contributed to the time you had in infant mode at the yeah. end. So it was all about bi- essentially building up your um, your time so that you could have as much time in infinite and almost try. It's almost like the game was designed to be played in infinite mode and you were just working up and building yeah. up to that infinite mode, which I liked as a mechanic. I thought that was really good. I just, but like this, you is, said, this is this is for chillaxing. This, this is, is just... absolutely for chillaxing or for yeah. very short bursts of gameplay. Mm-hmm. You can do it. You can do a play field in like thirty seconds if you're good enough. So, and there was can... a there was another Apple Arcade game that kind of reminds me of it. Let me see if I can bring up what I don't have access to it anymore. But mm. <sighs> da, 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 da. I want to say it was called Sping. Okay, I th- think that was the one that I was playing. Um, and it was uh, basically you had a ball that was dropping and, and it had like a um, a grappling hook that you'd shoot and then you'd spin it around and fling it around. Oh yeah, the board. I could see spin. Yeah, um, and that was it was same kind of mechanic or not same kind of mechanics, but lots of boards for you to yep. perfect and based on uh, it was a little bit of timing, but also how many points you garnered while going through. That's how your ranking mm. went. So. Uh, it kind of reminded me of that. And I wound up, of the, all the Apple Arcade games that I had downloaded during that time that I had access to it, that was the one I wound up playing the most. Okay. Um, Interesting. So that's what I'm saying. If you if you knew what that game was, this is definitely a good, good go. But I'd, I'd say for me, if I had to rate it, I would just, I don't really do half ratings. I'd say this one is a solid five for me. Okay. Um, it's It's got the legs on it to make it satisfying it's in-game aesthetics it's graphical style it's sound design all those things really make this title quite highly rated for me um 
I yeah, I do quite like. And I'm sure I'm going to get really frustrated as I get into those upper levels yeah. on the game because they look really hard. Um, but at the same time, there's always going to be a way that you can perfect them. You just have to find it. And that's sort of half the fun of this game, working out the right way to approach it. Like you showed, like you know, do that center shot last because it's a drain monster, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's really well designed. You can so, yeah, imagine yeah. if this was a Smurfberry game where oh, it, you would have only so many attempts per board and then the energy bar would go, oh, you can't make another attempt until you watch a video or you do X, Y, Z, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it would be... <laughs> horrible it would just completely take you out of the zone that this game was designed for and this is this is why i'm so glad that they didn't go down that path with this game that it's not a smurfberry hellfest yeah because it would ruin it it would ruin what the game was um it's there for making you relax and those those models make me not relax (laughs) when i play (laughs) mobile games so yeah great work on this title it's excellent all right, so let's move on to uh, then uh, Zen offerings. So obviously, if you uh, watched the latest pinball show, uh, you know what? I actually didn't watch the latest pinball show. You know what? Neither did I. I didn't watch and... it because I just like, I was busy, and then I went, hey, look what's here. Ta-da! Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Ex- I just didn't feel the need because the, the things were there. Maybe if I had, if I would have noticed the thing that Jared pointed out to me um, about, <laughs> what's, about what's available. Um, so we'll get to. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, basically the remainder of the Star Wars pinball tables is now available, mm-hmm. um, which is fantastic to uh, finally cap off that collection. So, uh, oh, and then the other table that... Well, let's just do this. Okay, so that was the... Uh, Large big, bundle that was going to large be Large bundle of... That we were hinted at. Yeah, releases. Did me and Jared even think about the remaining Star Wars titles? No. No. Totally reason, that just, forgot about yeah, them. We were concentrating on Zen originals or Marvel. So yeah. that was kind of funny. And then Whoops. as for the surprise, <laughs> we whiffed it hard on that one too because surprise no is My Little surprise. Pony. Surprise, <laughs> My Little Pony. Yeah. We um, went, uh, oh, Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure that was the uh, surprise we were hoping for. <laughs> so. It's funny, you know, because I've like I've been watching the leaderboards. I've actually been playing a reasonable amount of pinball effects lately, mostly thanks to my son Zach, because okay. he has been hammering Safe Cracker. Oh, like okay. <laughs> he actually was the one who got me the Collect All Tokens award on that game. He yeah. has been loving that table a lot. Um which has been good for me because every time he he's a token hunter, he he will go for the 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 safe every time and not stop playing until okay. he gets the safe a safe breach. But he isn't interested in playing assault on the vault, um, so I am the one who uses the tokens to chase my leaderboard score. So currently, I'm the first on the leaderboard in pinball effects for um, Save Cracker with a. Uh, a five million and change score, high fives, which is what you need on the on that game to get on the leaderboard at the moment. It's uh, it's quite a, a hard slog in Assault in the Vault to get that high. Um, so yeah, he's been slamming it, and then because of that, we've been going through some of the other tables and exploring around. Even Sienna's been enjoying things like Medieval Madness, so we've been definitely playing that a lot recently, um, and. Yeah, it's been good for them to experience these new tables, in particular, My Little Pony. Um, Because I think when we were doing the the beta for the Zen Bimpool party, I handed the iPad over to the kids and said, hey, try all these new tables that are coming out, all these, you know, kitty tables, let's call them that, um, from all these different brands. And they sort of had a couple of goes on them, but then they kind of went, meh, and they just went back to the Williams tables. Um, which were in the collection. So it was a bit weird to see their reaction to it on the iPad. But when it's come to the PC and they've, again, had the controller, had the chance just to relax on the couch and do it, not stare at a little screen, they've become more engaged with it. Like Sienna has gone back to My Little Pony quite a bit and has enjoyed the accessibility of that table and its modes and being able to feel like she has a sense of achievement in Mm -hmm. some of the tables. 
I mean, not to say she's not a slouch on the Belly Williams tables. Like on Medieval Madness, she got a 90 million score nice. on, on the table, which was not not bad at all. Um, so, you know, she's she's getting much better at it. But yeah, she really has enjoyed the My Little Pony table for what it is. Yeah, um, it's uh, but, uh, that one's uh, Thomas Croft design. Um, mm. Who I actually like his designs, and mm. um, it's just one of those things that I we had asked if they were going to tweak the rules, make them a little more difficult, more difficult, or even have that option. Um, it's not there, which is disappointing because um, I think the layout is fun. Uh, mm. You know, even if the theme is like out there for us, but um, even still, it's just kind of like. Oh man, I wish you had have just just beefed it up a little bit for us, because um, that makes me disappointed. That I know that when How to Train Your Dragon comes out, it's not going to be what it could be. And that's that's a really that table has probably the most scope for having a different rule set yes. on it. We we pointed that out when we first saw it. Like it's got real legs to it. It could have a very different rule set, but I just don't think they're going to do that they must have decided not to um i think they were entertaining it they're going uh maybe we we might actually look at doing it but um yeah i don't know one of maybe those, we'll see it one of those things that we'll have to we'll have to uh bring that up once more next time we talk to mel and be like yeah, that's right so do we keep our hopes up or do we dash them now because we'd like that, to know <laughs> Yeah, we'd uh, just like to know so we can either keep it off the list or put it back on again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that uh, kind of changed for us, so we had been using uh, the pinball pass. Yes. And because of that, we never got to see what the discounts uh, building was. We you know, once Zen introduced that and everything. Uh, but then all of a sudden we got an email that said, um, yeah, your Zola pinball pass is now canceled. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait a second. It's yeah, been exactly. A year. <laughs> it did definitely come as a, a surprise and no one else would have received this. It was, only would have been probably us because probably, of yeah. the fact that, um, through the, the, a recent press pack update for My Little Pony, that's when the the change that uh, they would have announced in the pinball show came out to how the pinball class is being administered. So Exola is out, and it's now uh, the pinball pass is now uh, an in-app um, store-specific purchase in Epic Games, which should um, make people a little bit excited there, because guess what that means? Yeah, <laughs> we're that, inching that... closer to the. One purchase across Four. all devices. <laughs> yep, because Exola was not compatible with consoles, which was the real rub there, from what I understood. Hmm. Um, so they they had to ditch it because of that. Um, and it wasn't like you know, once you got it set up, it was all right, but it was not really a seamless experience. You had to go in there and you know sign up for an Exola account and then like log into it, and it was like a uh, it wasn't a smooth experience to onboard into it. So I think now with the fact you can buy the Pinball Pass in-app, and it's not just the Pinball Pass for a year or for a month, you can actually do a day pass now, which is going to be good for people who are still on the fence with the titles and they don't really want to go all in with buying them, but they may want to have like a, a games night or something and... They they want to you know have everyone over and have full access to the catalog, um, and they can do that now just for a night. And also, it's a really cheap and fast way of testing out what the pinball pack offers if you like that sort of model. And you know, if you're into the subscriber model for um, games like Apple um, Apple Arcade and things like that, you know, if you haven't tried the pinball pass, it's actually not bad like you get access to everything and they're all there um but yeah we put to zen that maybe it will be good rather than getting reissued a, a pinball pass when the changeover happened because it wasn't smooth for us and that's only because we were in the beta um the 
the code where we beat the code being actually released into production that yeah. did the, the seamless upgrade between Exola and um, the App Store. So it all just fell apart <laughs> for yeah. us, which, you know, that's what you're there for to, to test things out. We get that. But um, they the Zen fixed us up by giving us some ticket packs. Which yeah, we're very so thankful with for. that, we finally got to see what it uh, what it looks like to do mass discount because lo and behold, there mm. was twenty seven tables that uh, we needed to buy. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, which is a little so, bit daunting to uh, to go. Um, so I kind yeah. of did a breakdown of what all kind of what entailed, um, rather than basically we wanted to catch. We wanted to do the maximum that we could. Um, and currently, since Star Wars had gotten released, they were thirty three percent off. Um, I don't know how long that sale runs, if it's still just the first week or maybe it's the first month um, mm. that they were doing that at. But I want to see where that went because it was that whole idea of, yeah, they're 33% off right now, but the more you buy, then all of a sudden bonus kickers happen. Yeah, you get um, tiers. Yeah, tiers uh, of... Actual bonus tiers in the, in the purchasing side, which is was really interesting so let's start with the base uh, discount that you get so there's three types of discounts that are available at certain times so you get a uh, collection discount which is if you buy all the tables in a particular group um, you get a collection discount which is i think it's um something like 20 percent or something like that um and then you get a uh, a level discount as well. So how many tables have you already got um, versus how many do you want to buy? There's a, a price or a level that you get the more tables you buy. So um, if you already bought, in, in our case, probably half the collection, I think the discount was sitting at about 21% or something like that. Um, so you then add those two together. Uh, actually, I think the, the first one, the pack discount is like 10%, not 20 yeah, So. And then you get it up to that. So you got like 30% discount just like that for just having um, selecting a pack and then having your tier discount. But then on top of that, if there's any um, promotional discounts that are happening in the store, you get that tacked on the top as well. And I think some of the, the packs that we got, some of the Belly Williams packs um, that we bought when we bundled all those ones together, that was up to like 55% off or something like that. Yeah, so I, um, I have a breakdown of what the percentages were for myself uh, as I mm. went through it. Um, so basically, I picked up the 19... No, excuse me, not the 19. Uh, the remaining, was it 12 Star Wars tables? Um, mm. When all was said and done, I got 57% off on those. It yeah. basically brought it down to the price of 19 tickets per table. Um, which is cheap. Which is basically $1.90 a table if you a work table. it out. Yeah. Mm. Um, which, okay... Let's admit it, that's still not the best that you've ever been able to get those for um, on Steam. Oh, definitely not. Um, and we'll get to why... That's not such not a bad, such a bad thing. thing. Yeah. Mm. Um, but on the surface, you're like, oh. right, that's going to be your initial reaction. <laughs> um, yeah. For Williams, uh, the remaining tables, it wound up being 36% off that I was getting. Mm, um, that's right. I got those two mixed up. The two, the two packs. It was definitely yeah. Star Wars. You're right. That was the steepest discount. It was yeah. like, whoa, okay, that's quite a lot. So the Williams, it was the uh, basically I was getting twenty nine percent off of everything, plus an additional nine percent, I think, or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, it wound up being twenty nine and thirty eight uh, tickets a piece for those tables. Um, mm. So again, that's not it's a little bit on the uh, steep side, but it is what it is. Uh, and look, you, if you look at those ones, though, let's let's compare Belly Williams to uh, um, Star Wars, and I think the cost we're seeing there is just license. Yeah, for through scientific games, absolutely. Like that's that's the offset that which is interesting if you look at it like that. Like that's the offset that you that we need to pay. Um, to as far as the discount goes, to sort of like make it still, I guess, reasonably profitable. Yeah. For Zen. And then so, um, yeah. I picked up uh, Homeworld and My Little Pony for basically twenty nine percent off. Uh, mm. So forty three tickets 
uh, for those. Uh, so anyway, it wound up being 27 items for 718 tickets for yep. an average of 44% off across the board. Across the board. Yep. Yeah. So you could actually, for that particular batch, that was probably about a good half of the tables. It was 700 tickets, which yeah. that's not bad, particularly with the the realization about what and why this is actually really important. Yeah, so because let's now go if, if things go the way that we're suspecting and hoping and been hinted at, um, you know, when consoles come to fruition, you'll be able to fire up your PlayStation 5. And if you've already been purchasing on Epic Game Store, you're going to be able to have those tables ready to rock. Um, once Steam mm. unlocks, tables are going to be ready to rock. You're only going to have to buy that one purchase, and then you're going to be able to open them up wherever. That's, yeah. I think, what our assumption is. I think that's where things are looking like they're going um, with this. Um so everything seems to be lining up um, to the whole cross-purchasing thing becoming not just a um, a nice to have, or perhaps we'll look at doing it, but it actually looks like it's becoming more and more of a certainty um, as time elapses. Which so, would be really, really nice because, like I said, there was a time years back where I decided I was going to make the switch from buying tables on PS3 to buying them on PC, and. It was a bit of a bitter pill to swallow when I had to. It was repurchase. definitely some sticker shock. Yeah, it was. Yeah, for sure. absolutely. Um, and then it was that whole idea, like why I never wanted to buy on PS4 because I was like, well, PS4 is going to go away, and then there's going to be a new PlayStation, and then what? You know, and I don't want to be mm. fretting whether or not things are going to carry over, and whether I have to do more purchasing and stuff. So it's like, I think it eliminates a bit of that stress. Uh, for if your purchase is justified and are you making the right choice? Like, especially if you're, you know, let's say you are also a Switch player and you're like, yeah. well, if I'm going to buy it for one console or the other, which one do I want to play it with? You know, do I want to play it for the one that's portable or do I want to play it for the one that's going to have better graphics? You know? Well, that's right. Or, you know, do I want to, you know, like, where do I actually wait and have the portability or do I wait? for the fidelity, like you were saying. Yeah. And so you don't need to really make that choice anymore. You just need to go, well, I'm going to buy them once. At the moment, you can only buy them through the Epic Games School. But right. as as that uh, landscape starts to grow with the eventual release of consoles and um, you know uh, Steam and stuff, it doesn't really matter where you buy them. So you can actually hunt around for the sales if you've got like multiple ecosystems like you've got like a switch and you've got uh, pc um and you've got steam well uh, uh you can sort of just play them off against each other and sort of hunt those discounts down as they get released but it's going to be interesting to see how zen manages that um so that uh they balance the sort of discounts being offered between platforms so people don't feel like they're losing out on one I don't, platform. I don't think that there's going to be platform specific pricing anymore. Is this going to be store specific? I think it's going to just be, hey, these are all on sale. Because that was what Mel was saying was so difficult was if you wanted to put something on sale, you first had to get approval from Sony oh, that's or right. Xbox. And it was yeah. because you're using their store. But if Zen is using their own store, they don't have to wait for that approval. If it's an in-app store, which yeah. is what it is, yeah, it's not through. You don't buy DLC through the store; it's just through the the actual um, app itself. And again, then, I'm using I'm using Rocket League as the example because um, yeah. that's what I feel this is going to be like. Where it's whatever the sales and the seasons, they all start all at the same time, and the sales are the same thing. There might be a platform specific um, accessory that you can buy. Like you can get Mario mm. hats on the Switch. You're obviously not going to have a Mario hat then on your PlayStation um, no. for your car. But beyond that, everything transferred over. And, and you know, again, I would, I'd be playing on the Switch and I'm like, hey, I'm going to see what it's like on the PC. I went over to the PC and phew, everything, everything was there. Everything was there. <laughs> yeah. It's such a good experience. And it means that 
you have the flexibility of where you play when you play. And yeah. honestly, that's what players are demanding at the moment with yeah. a lot of these sort of more, uh, let's say, casual style games that don't require a mouse. Um, you know, it's what everyone wants. So, the other thing I would say right now for those of you that have not purchased and are waiting for it to come to Steam or come to console, um, Mel had hinted that when this comes out of early access and is the thing that all of the sales that currently had gone, you know, when a new pack released and it was on sale for that initial week, I believe all of that's going to just be, <laughs> there it is yeah. on sale. So that was the other thing, just to pointing out that, yeah, you know, 27 tables when, and it, that was with Star Wars being at 33% off, which a lot of these, mm. when they first released, that's what Zen has been releasing at. Is that yeah. percentage off? So conceivably, you could get even better discount than what we just picked up um, on more tables. Mm. So long because as of the, the ability tickets. to group them, or you're, like the more you group, the bigger the discount. So if yeah. you're if you're not buying half of the Star Wars tables now and half later, like we did, the chances of you getting a much steeper discount because you're packaging all those tables in one collection. It's it's a real thing. Yeah, like you you actually stand to save more potentially. Well, because that um, first initial dump uh, when Epic Games Store just first opened with this, uh, we were given twelve hundred tickets and we used every single one of them to yeah. purchase. How many tables was that? Was it twenty five? I think maybe. I don't know the exact number, but it was yeah. It was it something was, of that uh, nature. Um, we were able to get everything but. Pasha, basically, yeah. and that was using all yep. twelve hundred, and now we're yeah. basically getting the exact same amount of tables uh, with what four hundred tickets to spare. Yeah, so the discounts are real yeah. if you if you bundle these things, and, and we've seen it firsthand. So, yeah, the console folks, uh, when it lands in there, and Steam folks, if you are still avoiding buying anything. Um, it seems like there's a, a fairly good chance you'll the sticker shock to upgrade won't be as bad as you may have first thought. True that. All right. So now that we've been talking about this, I'm Jared. I'm just going to leave you up on the screen because I got to get this uh, up and running. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to show you. I guess we'll show My Little Pony. Uh, we've shown it before, obviously in um, Zen Pinball Party. Zen Pinball Party. Mm. But this is a bit different it is a bit different bring this up there there we go getting that going hopefully i still have all my audio settings <laughs> so that i'm not blowing out the uh the audio i should also probably check for uh that i've got the streaming music turned off oh yeah Once although i don't think there's anything copyright uh, if i put there. star wars there is Oh, yeah, if you do Star Wars, <laughs> you'll absolutely get uh, copyright. Hold on. We're going to just... It's easier for me when using the controller. My Little Pony Pinball. Go into this. Uh, and then it changes the settings yeah, in the, the uh, setting table. Yeah. yeah, that's a good call. All right, now I'm going to go down here. Let's see. Settings. There we go. Mute yeah. license music. Where is it? It's on audio. Audio. Oh, it is in there. Just uh, oh, yep, there. mute oh, license yep, I've already got thing. muted. Okay, good. Yep. And I've got all my other... Okay, good. Everything's good. I think you don't actually have it muted. you got it turned off because it would be green if it was on. There you go. Yeah, okay. Now it's muted. Now it's muted. Excellent. No copyright strikes for us. No. <laughs> we don't want those. So the nice thing about this is now I finally actually am able to, um, you know, see the table <laughs> rather than squint yeah. at it and go, wait, what is going on over there? Were you playing this on a when it was on Zen Pinball Party? Were you doing it on a phone or yeah. on a tablet? Oh, you were doing it on the phone. Doing it on the phone. Oh wow, yeah, that would have been <laughs> hard. But have a look at what they they got here. Like as the table scrolls around, you've got like visible ramp transparency and um, you know really quite high <laughs> resolution artifacts everywhere on the table, like. Everything is very, very crisp. Yeah. I, I did get that in. I, they had to make some trade-offs, obviously, with the um, the Apple version. Certainly. But 
this is yeah it's it's a pretty yeah, shiny there's actual table. gi lighting going on and and it's yeah. effective stuff that being said i never leave home without my on. party cannon oh, let me uh i want i don't know yeah. sure, whatever. Let's get that'll just my give you. you i hate it when i do that i went one <laughs> view too many okay there we go yeah. so that's that's the classic view that i always go in here's my thing where's the lighting <laughs> yeah the, it is cartoon is, bright it really is cartoon bright and there's not a lot of uh, I, there's I like no i mean the gi lighting is there but you don't notice it because morning, the room one. is so bright so bright and that's yeah. very disappointing to me um, yeah again it, it, i get appealing to a certain audience a but how about appealing to gecko. your regular audience that is used to you know that yeah, is playing. I think it's fair enough too that they probably wouldn't have been able to do more realistic lighting um, on iOS. Right, but we're on PC here. We've got the power to do it. Yeah, so I'm hoping, 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 hoping that uh, again, this was just the quick port, and we'll see. There's the more work to come. Yeah. 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 Maybe it's when they get all the other ones in as well that um, we, we'll see a pass done Cozy over these world? tables to sort of, you know... Right, because uh, I imagine them. that would be a um, much like selecting arcade or classic for playing, that maybe it would uh, earth is that pony have you doing? select that sort of hey, thing for light Applejack. or for look. Yeah. Do you want some help? I, I, know, I, <laughs> I know I can't hear the audio on this, yes. but I don't need to. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I could hear it all because <laughs> I, you know, Sierra has played it, and I've, I've played it too because I wanted to, you know, put a leaderboard score up. And someone, I think their current leaderboard score is about 550 million on this at the moment, oh, which, so having played to my leaderboard score, which is about 250 or 260, that's a lot of this audio that you have to listen yes. to, so <laughs> and, and it gets I, a I little was, repetitive. Oh, it definitely gets repetitive. I, yeah. Um, it, it's a bit of a, a hard one to, to spot this one. I, I mean, I'm not the demographic that this table is aimed at, and I totally understand that. But So this is what I mean by lighting. Oh. We have two of those crystals lit. You can barely tell. Yeah, that's right. And you, they you should be tell. just glowing. In, and so, in effect, even though you're making it nice and bright for everybody to be able to see, you're also making it a little bit more difficult for knowing what you need to attack. Yeah. Because nothing's and popping. And also... The, I mean, this is beyond what they can change now. But having those those um, element crystals on the ramp like that is yeah. a real missed opportunity. It's really flat, and it's really you like, they could they could do what they did with um, um, Tales of the Arabian Nights in advanced mode. I mean, enhanced mode with the amazing looking crystals hmm. that are all three dimensional and faceted, and they look amazing. You know, it would be really nice to see that here, but this is, you know, the, that ship has sailed. Um, How many times can Chris hit that? I don't know. Just <laughs> shoot again, Chris. No. Ah! No, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to shoot that really massive, impossible <laughs> that to miss. target. target. That the that for some reason that oh, is virtually yeah. impossible. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, it's as big as a bus. You, you still can't hit it. Oh, look. <laughs> this is comical. Yep. Hi, Rarity. Yep. What's there. up? You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to get, like, multi-ball going, and then I'll bash the heck out of it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, yeah. The thing is that, you know, Sienna was talking that as she was playing it, and I was commenting on the, the sound effects and all the, the things. She was giving me the detailed backstory about all, of everything? All, the, all, all the ponies and going, oh, yeah, so this is this, and this is the reason why they're doing this, and I'm going... Oh, okay, right. Yeah, so I, I kind of get it more. Nice still, work, don't, doesn't change what my opinion. You, <laughs> yeah, I still don't it, care, but, but I get it more. Yeah, <laughs> I understand why I don't care anymore. Um, yeah. So the interesting thing, though, with is as right. cheese ball as my little pony is, um, I still like it better than Homeworld. <laughs> well, you know, You're gonna do just uh, fine. it's. Um, yeah, makes it actually so sure is because more fun. I have and faith in my friends. Why is who that? Also to be I think because things are happening. The flow of the game is better. Um, yeah. it, it it's kind of Steve Ritchie-ish, you might say, in that sense yeah. with the flow. Um, 
You can get multi ball yeah, no pretty start. easily. Yeah, well, you can get not only multi ball. It's not that hard to get wizard mode on this either. No. Um, if you've uh, completed all the shots and look, everything. This is sort of Spellorama in a really light sense. Like you've got We've three shots to light the mode. Job. If um, the villains are coming so for a fight, it, it is we'll technically have one Spellorama, but you're only spelling three things at a time. I can deal with that. Right. Um, well, three things is a standard but, to me. I mean, yeah. You know, that's that's how it all works on things like medieval madness and stuff yeah. like that. So that that's like that's fine. That's pretty like much. Like three or four, I don't program. mind. It's when it's seven to eleven. That's like hmm, not really. Oh, um so, so yeah, that's it's how it definitely works. It, it does flow very well. All the shots. That the cross you know, the, the jump ramp shot is satisfying to hit. Mm -hmm. You know. So there's there's good stuff, there's good bones in this table. Like, this would be a table that you Perfect. could easily retheme and reuse the layout into something different. Maybe add a few more toys on, and you could have a completely different experience. I've never um, been if so you sad had the, uh, a bit of a time to redesign it. And that middle ramp reminds me so much of um, WWF well, Royal trying. Rumble. I believe that you. center shot um, that you used to loop up in the middle. It's, yeah, I went, oh, look, it's WWF Royal Rumble. Uh, in the center of the ramp, so it's it's got a lot. It's got it's got potential. Like they could do things ah, with this layout. I really want to hit. I want to get that multi ball. <sighs> oh, you're one off, aren't you? Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm one off. And I really yeah. think that's the best thing about this entire table because it's just plain bonkers. Oh, it is. Like the multi balls in this are incredibly rewarding. And Chris doesn't actually have the visual extras, like the trails, ball trails and stuff turned on for this, I don't think. No, I don't have um, ball trails turned on. But when you do and you get multi-ball, um, they, they have rainbow Wait, should trails. I turn them on? Yeah, t t turn them on. All right. Because it actually looks really, really cool in this uh, game. Like, the ball trails actually really sell the theme even more. Where are ball trails for gameplay? Uh, ball trails. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, turn them on for this game. For this game, I'll do it. Yeah. Because I didn't know that. And I'd like to see just how bonkers it gets. It's bonkers. Yeah. Oh, come oh. on. You see the ball trails? Well, yeah, I see that ball trail. All there right, you here go. We go. Now you <laughs> get ready because it's going to get wild. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> rainbow vomit everywhere. Oh, rainbow vomit hard. The tree has always yeah. been good Whoa, at surprises. Here we go. Ah! I like that, uh, like, Sienna was really pointing out the fact that, oh, like, all the balls are actually themed to the different ponies. That's mm -hmm. really cool. Because she's getting, she's really getting what they're selling here in, in this table. Like, she knows what's up. And but I like, think that's really cool. This is a very satisfying multi-ball. I have no idea what's going on. I'm just flipping like crazy because there's way too many balls on the table. Way too many balls. But and that's what's kind of making it save. fun. Yeah, and the ball save is so long in this mode. Like they just keep on coming out at you. Because like, yeah. normally, you know, with the multi ball, we know that you know the best thing to do with multi ball is to drain that first ball immediately. Yes. And just get rid of it if oh, it's wait, a three wait, ball, so that you can trap up and and just be dealing with two balls. That's the secret. Right. Um, I hit my camera angle and I'm not in a position to to fix change it. it. You have to pause and then like hit the. Oh, I almost had it. You're trying to catch the balls. And the, the thing is, the balls feel, in this mode, they feel really ping-pongy. Like, they had this really there we go. sort of, I don't know, th this ping-pong feel to them. Um, they feel lighter and more bouncy. Yes. Oh, yeah, there is a jackpot. Yeah, right ah. there. Cross, cross ramp shot. Ooh. Yeah, and this is this mode here is the one that you What on earth is that pony doing? Hey, Applejack. Points Do you like that. Want some that's six ball multi ball oh, because yeah! there's so many balls flying at you. Oh, you literally every shot scoring points. Fun. So and then it that very little much one reminds me of uh, what was that Apollo 11 or Apollo 13? Oh yeah, the, it was. Yeah, the 13 ball multi ball. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is I quite reminiscent of that. And all multi balls in this game are six ball multi balls. So, oh, all of them are. Yeah, so the, the main multi ball you get um, uh, for the wizard mode oh, is, is also 6 so ball. Uh, it doesn't it have the, the colored. I don't think Zara's it goes to back, the theme ball. It just goes to all silver. Of our friends. But it's it's bonkers crazy. You're only one way, uh, one away from getting wizard mode. You need to get cupcakes, which is the left orbit. 
Yeah, if you can manage to qualify that, you can, you can see the wizard mode at the same time. Um, right. You know, just for lols. How do I know that now, I need that? Where's what is telling you that I'm almost at wizard? In the bottom left hand corner oh, of the apron, gotcha. you'll see the, the, the list of modes. I see it. And uh, you might have just <laughs> been. It's right, you got extra balls no, got no extra everywhere. Ball. Yeah, so the I will give you a tip. If you want to get big scores in this game, yeah. the, the thing you need to select from the scrolling um, yes. selection of things is that weird thing that looks like a, it's actually Rainbow Dash's emblem, and it's coming up now. And when? Now. Well, well, for me, I'm probably delayed, but it's like the thing that looks like a comma in the okay. display. It's got like a, that. a, like a, yeah, that thing. So that'll give you play field multiplied by two, basically. So you get two times the scores. And that seems to qualify for jackpots as well. So that's the one to pick if you think you're going into a multi-ball mode. Um, select that one for your ball and you'll get big points. In fact, it's not a bad one to, to check all the time because it'll get you some decent points during modes as well. I know that when I was playing it on the app that I was using whatever to get my multiplier up and get held. And by oh, doing yeah. that, it just like I shot. I am just made about things crazy. Yes, the multiplier does play a quite a big role in this game too, it seems. Um, so yeah, just go and shoot the shot. So the, the thing I found with this game, and I'm sure everyone who's played this game before has worked it out as well, the, the shots you need to hit in each mode don't change. It's always the the, the center um, um, scoop that is the one that will score you the most points. Excuse me. Um, and all the other ones will give you good shots, but that, that center scoop is the one that will give you great together. shots. I always let um, my imagination run away so from now me. you qualify Ready, for the wizard mode, I think. Oh, yeah, it's good still. Yep. So shoot the the unshootable shot. La -di -da. Yeah. I know right now our audience is going, good lord, can you just finish this table? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, we, we feel your pain, We've but come on. Time Here we go. And time again now it's time for the, the wizard mode. The six right. of us working together. Get ready for the ball vomit. More, more rainbow. So it's a, that We've weird comment you said, it's a cloud job. with a uh, rainbow coming out of it. Yeah, it's rainbow dashes. It's basically your emblem. So interesting um, that now it's just regular silver balls in this one. It's silver balls with yeah, wow. Jeez. <laughs> it's still chaotic. Still, that's for sure. Yes. But so um, it, and yes, the balls do feel they're definitely different. They're not as bouncy as those yeah. other ones. They they feel weighted. Yes. Um very they so it's interesting that they've actually introduced a different ball mechanic for the um, they're easy to get with uh, the sort of first minor multi-ball. This is essentially like the the major multi-ball. It's almost like, I think, for the real players, not the kids. Okay. Um, though I'm not saying that kids can't get up to this mode if they're good enough. But this feels like the mode that, you know, if you know what you're doing and you get the rules, but again, this is your reward. If you walked it. up to this table... It wasn't difficult that to get a multiple was something. No, it's really not. And that's um, what my whole point with the other episode was. Where you should be rewarded even if you're just flipping about not knowing what the heck you're doing. Yeah. Because it makes you want to learn Relax. what to do. Yeah, yeah multi-ball will get you... Um, multi-ball brings all the boys to the yard, so sure? essentially. <laughs> so if you I want the multi-ball <laughs> to sort of entice you in, Debbie, the and then that'll get you hooked on the, the game. Rat. Like, all the Belly Williams games that we've seen make multi-ball getting simple. Like, it's clearly laid out, you know, exactly what to shoot for. There's inserts in the play field that tell you these are the locks, and you strive to get those in the game. Homeworld well, hello, did, did, does not have that at all. Everything is just... It's just a guessing game, game unless you read the instructions. Whereas, I mean, I arguably this thing it's as well exactly is a bit of a guessing game, unless you know be. to shoot oh, that, that center nice. shot and then hit the jump ramp. Um, you know, that won't be apparent to you. And I will say that when I first chips? played this game, I kind of discovered that by accident just by shooting around. But once I knew it was there, it was like, oh, okay, so this ah, is how you get one of the, the money balls. So cool. Well, then I'll shoot works. that all the time. Mm. You know. 
And so here you go. Now you're back to the start again, and you do it all again. <laughs> and unfortunately, right. it's not like it gets more difficult the second time. Like, no, it's the same level difficulty. Yeah, we're not doing the, oh, now that you've finished it once, you now have to actually complete each mode or hit a certain... What is that pony doing? Hey, yeah. Applejack! No, it doesn't make it harder. Do you yeah. So it's just the same. So that's why there's a 500 million high score in the leaderboards at the moment for this one. Yeah. You oh, so you're saying I shouldn't go for that right now? Oh, go and do... <laughs> hey, look, it doesn't worry me, because I can't hear the audio. It's just a silent game for me, which, honestly, is, it's quite pleasurable. <laughs> <laughs> Watching it play like this, because I don't have to hear the, the... Ah, so that's how it works all the time. <laughs> That was a very good imitation right there. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm scared of how many uh, extra balls I actually have. Oh, uh, you probably got, like, 18 stacked at the moment, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to, hold on, where's my, uh, I'm at 94, I feel like I need a cool 100 million before I can quit. Uh, yeah, right. Well, you probably get that bonus, You can't so probably, beat us you know. if we never give yeah. up. Now you got to shoot the unshootable target, Chris. <laughs> oh, look, you got it. Oh, yeah. so <laughs> that's Like, they really take the cardboard works. cutout to a new level with this game. Like, they are the biggest surface area targets I've ever seen in a pinball <laughs> machine. <laughs> They are quite large. And here I go again, shooting the exact same thing over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you go. Such consistency in your shot making there. Like, how many times do you want that, that set of shot, shot? Oh no, the extra ball is a blinking, Jared. Oh no, don't shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's what we call hate pinball. <laughs> yep. Where we're now actively grudge rooting mode. against me. Yep, grudge pinball. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. All right. right. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna drain and let He's it. gonna drain. You can always like you know. To ask the great help. thing about Zen is you can just pause the game, exit out of the table, and continue where you left off. Chris. Dude, that was the only bonus. <laughs> Thank you all. What? That's all you got? So much. Man. I hear you, Jared. Yeah. Ooh, I got cake. Cake. <laughs> Cake is a lie. Cake is a lie. Aw. <laughs> Too bad we can't boot that game up in here. Um, That's a, that is a shame, so, isn't it? So, like I said, lighting-wise, that one's you know, very much a disappointment. But, hey, we've got these other Star Wars games. Um, just Go to, to which one? Rebels. Rebels. Go to Rebels. Where is Rebels? Two down from where you are. There we go. That's not the so, new. Is that new to this? Rebel scum. It is. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's one of the new ones that were that was released. Um, what is it you want to do? Because I know you have a, a bug. Necessary. This yeah, this Rebels one has a strong bug that they haven't addressed. We're not exactly anything. Um, we're a crew, the, a team, the mode, which in some ways a family. Manage. Oh, is it not? Uh, oh, is it? Uh, it's oh, very right. much playing something that we shouldn't be hearing. Oh, but the licensed music is muted, so it's on. It's muted. Why is it not muting? I don't know. Zen! Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to try that and see if the music actually changes or not. One. Because I was expecting some generic music to be going on. I thought they do the music. They put a generic soundtrack in today. I've never played it without muted music. Needs a little something. It's also a little bit louder, this table, than ponies was like it didn't listen to me telling it to not have the volume up oh the the, the mix yeah the, we discussed this later in these new Star Wars tables is the other thing I found like the the, the voiceover oh, little bit environmental else. sound effects in this are way more pronounced than um, they should be so like Which you, you think, almost like, have if to if I turn the master volume down you would think that would fix it hey wait mute oh yeah you turned it off. It really should be on. No, yeah, it should be on yeah. to mute licensed music. Like it was already on when you came in there. It should not have been playing the. Well, hello, the, uh, well, the audio. I turned so the master broken. volume way down I so that now we just plain can't hear anything. So, yeah. <laughs> so the, that's fixed it. <laughs> so the the bug that exists on this table, which is potentially really lucrative, is that if you inspired. get thrust a multi ball. So for those not familiar with this table. That big flashing thing in the middle is a thruster, and you shoot that 
a, a, a number of times, like oh, one no, more time right. now to light the first lock and do the same thing again to light second. And then you can choose how many balls you continue locking for greater jackpots uh, in that. So you can start with a two-ball multi-ball, or you can actually keep locking balls up to about five, I think, and get like really, really Stop. big Jam jackpot um, possibilities off it. Like oh, it's, it helps. definitely is risk reward with this mode. But How's the problem going? is that, and I'm pretty sure this did not happen on the one in Pinball FX3, but the ball, no, for whatever reason, gets stuck in there. And the the way you build up the jackpot in this game is to shoot into the thruster. And it like oh. does a couple of spins, spins it back out again. And um, you know then you can shoot for the jackpot shot. So while it's spinning, I all the playfield lights blink in unison. Cell. Like it's just flashing constantly, right. blinking, blinking, blinking. But I don't think any of the black the, the jackpot shots are cashable. I got a jackpot um, payout up to 130 million right. with this button. Wow. 130 I million, else. and I cashed it. Yourself. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I managed to shoot a shot at just the millisecond timing that I needed between pulses. And I managed to cash it in, and I ended up in the, the press release build. I got 330 million on this table, which is way higher than any of the scores posted at the moment. So if someone can just luck out and, and cash in one of these big jackpot scores, it's going to completely skew the leaderboards in this table. Like It's a massive bug. I mean, massive is probably an overstatement. It's not that big a deal. Um, like you can play the game, but it's just really unbalanced at the moment with that bug. And also not satisfying because you can't actually get any of the jackpots and, and legitimately work your way through a multi-ball. So I think it's not a, a, a tricky bug to fix. They just need to change how that um, thruster mechanism retains the balls or just shut it off after 10 spins or something like that or 20 spins. Um, it's, a, it's not a, a difficult fix. So, so I just want to point out, you know, this is an animated series also, just like My Little Pony was. It, it is, yeah. But look at how not bright this table is. Like, the yeah. lights are popping. I'm understanding where to shoot based on what they are. I mean, and this is still not even, the you know, a very dark table. But no, it's not. It's dark enough that Needs a little the something. lights are affecting the look of the thing. And so that's all the I'm saying. The lights affect... The, the lights, it's what you call, the, the lights are conspicuous on the play field. They're not washed out. Okay, yeah. so you go and select multi-ball now. So start your multi-ball with two balls. And you'll see the ball stays in there. And you shoot it back in there, and it will stay in there again. Oh, they, oh look at that. For you, it's spitting out. Maybe they did maybe a patch. Maybe they fixed it. <laughs> oh, maybe they fixed it. Or maybe it is... Oh, I wonder if it's actually a... Um, a GPU issue, then. You know, this whole. So I've got the RTX 30 series, uh, and you've got a, a GTX. So I wonder if this I is think. actually something to do with the a combination of graphics settings. Okay. So I've got high everything, um, okay, and you got me. Um, all the you know, all Working the all it. the anti-aliasing on, and I think ray tracing's on. And I've, I've got it at 60 frames Speed. per second <laughs> as the, uh, um, the the cap. So I've capped my frame rate at 60 frames per second. But uh, like on my one, it will spin forever and do ever and ever not. and ever. So no it could, that's really interesting that you're not seeing this. Um, but that's also disturbing Finish. in the fact that those people who have higher graphics cards might be getting a very different gameplay experience right. here. So that was very interesting to see. Yeah, this is definitely behaving the way it should be do behaving and that's not. how it behaved in epic 3 no so track. that's something that i can add to the case for zen it's the fact no that way. it looks like on the gtx um, no, this whole like you're a 16 you're 1080 no 16 uh, 1060 1060 so you know on the gtx era of cards without ray tracing on it's not a problem um but on ones with ray tracing on. I could always test it with ray tracing off and see if it does area. the same bug. And that would probably isolate the the issue. Um, but yeah, that's that's definitely um, uh, something I'll be testing out. Uh, yeah, so that was the only one that I saw. But the I thing that I counted. like 
about these um, getting past the bug. Um, the thing that I really like about these tables on um, the new Pinball FX platform is that the there's just more subtlety in the lighting, and you get it like it's clearer than it was on FX3, and it's just a little bit better, um, I find. So yeah, I'm glad to see these Star Wars tables come to um, the platform, and I'm looking forward to getting into them more. Well, not only that, the this collection of Star Wars tables is the ones I like better. Yeah, that's right. These are what I would consider the better of the Star Wars, the ones that are now in this collection. Um, yes. We're not I exactly agree. anything. What about the We're one crew, that team. is... In some uh, ways a family. I pay what I see. I forget the name of the table. It's the one set on Endor. Seriously. Um, that's a uh, 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 Jedi. Yeah, that was that in this collection or was that the first look? No, that came in this collection. Yeah, it, it looks amazing. Yeah, I'll show Environmentally, that. Environmentally... Environmentally, uh, da, da, da. it just looks like. Is that Jedi? Yeah. <laughs> of the Jedi. Like we, we saw this in um, uh, the Force Awakens as well, with this I sort of playfield, sort of environment being so literally part of the, the playfield. Like, look at that. <laughs> that is. <laughs> <drain> immediately. <laughs> that is like world under glass stuff right there, right? Yeah. Like it looks like it's you're just in the middle of a forest. It's such such immersion. The um, only problem that I have amazing. with this one is because uh, in cabinet view, uh, at least when I was playing this in FX3, um, that ramp All the... right there to... Here, I'll uh, do this. The ramp to the right. Which I can't yeah, even that. get to <laughs> uh, in viewing mode. Yeah, that whole thing gets cut off. Yeah, there, it's, it disappears. Because this this is a super wide body, super duper one. wide. Yeah, it's massive. So yeah, it, it, right. you're right. Hang you do on. lose bits of it if you're playing in cabinet mode on here. But um, as far as playing this on a sort of desktop or you know, eventually console, this will really this really showcases the you know what this the, the new graphics can do. Because I don't recall it being like this on fx3 like, it's pretty good in fx3 truth be told mm. um, it, does it have this environment yes it does in fx3 mm -hmm. oh right i must have does. been mm. but i think the resolution like the actual environmental resolution is much lower it's just um, you can see i think this was the last of the tables um of the like, I think we got, I think it went, uh, obviously Empire was first, and then I uh, think it went A New Hope, and then I think we got this one. Uh, yeah. And this, to me, was the best of the three, lighting-wise. Yeah, I, I love this table, just Welcome because it's really fun. Like, the Battle of Endor mode on this is so fun. I will always select it from the mode selection first um, when I do it. So, Battle of Endor. So be it, Jedi. That one? There you are. Right. Yeah, what do we do? It's like an instant six ball multiple. Oh. Here we go. Oh, look out. Oh, sorry, four ball. I stand corrected. But still, that's a okay. vomit of balls. That's funny. Yeah, that's, that's heaps. More than you can actually deal with, generally. Considering I have no clue what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, you got to hit the lit lanes. I'm just trying to read oh. the DMV for you. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, which, this does suffer the DMV problem. Yeah, it does. Uh, hit the lit lanes to hotwire the door. Shots left one. So you got to shoot I know the lit lanes. So it's yeah, the, it's uh, one mid ramp. Yeah, that's right. The one that it's really hard to get to when you're trying to control 50 million balls. <laughs> yes. So this is. Uh, um, unfortunately, this era of table was definitely a oh, hard no, one. Good shot. Thanks, guys. Oh, oh, you did it just before <laughs> when you ended the mode. Yeah, of course that happens. Yeah. But, you know, that's a really fun mode in this one to play. And this it, is... It's it's a multi-phase mode, too. Like, the first yeah. step is you do that. Then you do another thing and then another thing in the mode. So it's actually really tells... It's got a good narrative flow in it, that mode. Yeah, so this is another one that Deep designed. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why I like Deep stuff. Let's show the yeah. last thing that uh, got added into Pinball Effects, I believe, with, with this la latest update. 
Correct. Uh, and, and this that is. is uh, let's just say that we went over to Indiana Jones, and look at this, folks. You can now play pro mode. Yeah. So no power ups, steeper play field, wider out lanes, and no extra balls. So basically, this is tournament settings. This is absolutely tournament settings, and I can say this with high degree of confidence. These tables play like the ones at Netherworld now. Like, they are brutal. So hard. Oh, um, gorgeous lighting. Oh, yeah. So good. Um, the, the, the tables are mean. They're fast and mean, and they... They you won't last long on them. Like you have <laughs> like a look that? at the leaderboard scores. Yeah, like that. I'm like trying um, to you have a look at the ball, the... and I just playing camp. And honestly, this is like when you're playing Indiana Jones in the arcade. That's your experience. Like I've had many times have I got a one million score on my first ball in this game. Like it is not easy to play if it's set up to make the operator money. Um, so the thing I like about this is while the the I think the play fields. I think they're just oh, watch the video touch. mode. Watch it's impossible to watch. Oh. The Ready? Whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> I think it's yeah, I, I think it's this one. Oh my gosh, I got it right. Oh, what a... <laughs> <laughs> I chose you have wisely. Chosen, luckily. <laughs> luckily, yeah. I, I did it the other day and I was so off it wasn't even re It was like no, it was ridiculous. I had no idea. There's actually yeah. a pattern. So uh, on each mode, there's a pattern in which they appear that you can look up online if mm. you want to have a look at that. Um, but yeah, these these games are now very hard to get high scores on. Uh, if you <laughs> if you have a go at Medieval Madness, you'll if you played this in any arcade around, you go, yep, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Um, certainly for me, the score I got on uh medieval madness in zen with pro mode on was very similar to the score that i usually get at netherworld for an average game um on medieval madness like it's it felt it felt um unfortunately very real <laughs> so my <laughs> was... only my only problem <clears throat> is and i think we'll do this so i'm in view two yeah if you look at uh well i'm going to use the right flipper being up look at the angle that it's at uh, mm -hmm. Right there, below the line of Indy's shoulder, basically. Yep. Okay. It it lines up very nicely to that. Mm -hmm. um, previously, when we'd selected Pro Mode or Classic Mode, the flippers were a bit shallower. I think I could be wrong. Mm. And I would, and so Indy may not be the choice one to do because I don't know that we had varying flippers even in the uh, Steam version. Um, mm. but so you see where that is though right now. Mm. So if I go exit out of this, and I go into arcade. arcade, so this should be the easy, easy version, right? Yeah, that's right. With all the everything. Yep. And we'll fire this up. It's in the same view. And it's the exact same flipper angle. Yep. Not changed. Has not all. changed one iota. Now, <clears throat> the question is, did anybody ever notice before? Does anybody care? I don't know. That, so I'm going to real quickly exit out of this. I'm going to go into medieval, like you said. Yep. Because um, I want to see. I know for sure medieval had varying... Um, Flipper degrees. So let me see what. This Since is we're on arcade, like. let's go with arcade first. Yeah. Um, you too. Turn off the enhancements. So if I flip up, it's just above the scroll. Yeah. Um, so basically touching the red. Of the You're touching the red text. Yeah, that's why I call it as well. Yeah. Um, okay, so that being said. Do, do, do. Go back. And now I'm going to go into pro mode, which should be the most difficult. I am the king of pain. My 
And it's touching the red again. Yeah, touching the red. So Same. it does not exactly. change. And the reason why I don't care for that is it allows you to do exactly that. Catch the ball as it rolls down. Yeah. With the shower flipper, it bounced over to the other. So it makes catching yep. the ball really hard. Like you try doing, if you try to catch the ball from the eject from the castle uh, in any of the medieval madnesses I've played, and I've played a couple of them, both remakes and originals, um, it's danger yeah. if you try and do it from the left flipper and trap up. You've got to, you know, try and take a whole lot of speed off the ball by, you know, essentially half drop catching it. Yeah. And there's no way you can do that, what nope. you just did then. Nope. Like, there's absolutely no no chance. And doing a, a running shot to the castle off the left flipper with actual flipper pitch, like, it's so hard. You've actually got to trap up and shoot to, to be accurate in your shots and in one's actual real table. So, it's... Um, if, if you want pro, I would say put shallower angles in and then maybe reduce the playfield pitch a bit. Because I think at the moment, the, the playfield pitch is actually... All they've done is they've made the table really steep and they haven't really changed anything else except for tournament rules and yeah. tournament ROM settings. I think the playfield angle is a little bit ridiculous in some. And I can tell you this for a fact because on Creature, when you shoot the slide a vertical up kicker I've had it um, pretty much fall back into that kicker five times in a row because mm. the pitch is so steep that it can't actually clear the popper and actually eject onto the wire form ramp so it's they've got some tuning to do in pro I think before you can really call it done um, and again I don't know maybe that's just my particular settings that I've got at the moment um but it's it's definitely um, I, I don't know some tables suffer worse than others and I mean there's an inconsistency as well with uh, ball saves across the tables as well and this maybe is something out of Zen's control in fact it's a ROM setting um, and how ROM settings happen in tournament but some tables like Circus Voltaire is a classic example of this when you're playing that in pro mode settings, there's zero ball saves in it. Not even on like a seat, like a you know house ball, you know stopping oh, you from okay. getting a house ball, um, like three second ball save or something like that. It's nothing. It's basically like an '80s early solid state. It's brutal. Whereas on something like um, Medieval Madness, you've got like you've got a um, a house ball ball save. So there's nothing consistent across the tables and i think if i was making a tweak to pro mode i would make it so that you at least have some ball save to just remove the frustration of getting a, a house ball um at the beginning of it and i'm not talking about a long ball save just enough time for the ball to do a loop come down brick something and drain so like you know less than five seconds would yeah. be enough but i think the biggest thing i'm noticing right now uh, with this uh, slope, is that the ball is not doesn't bounce up the table so high? Um, yeah, that's about the biggest difference that I'm noticing. And you can't like that um, princess ramp is is one that you've actually got to actively shoot for now. Like you've really got to aim for it. And oh, there you go. So you got <laughs> I was aiming. I was doing a running ball. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is that I found that, and if we. I don't know, it's probably just me, but in some of the games that, that's not pro mode, this is not a pro road mode observation, this is something that I've just noticed in Grim Tales, is that when you're in a, when you're not in a mode, you can easily shoot the ramps uh, and shoot all the shots, no problems. When you're in a mode, it's like the ramps like shrink by half. Like I'm bricking shots everywhere and I just cannot get a shot on it. And it only seems to be the shots that I need to shoot are actually narrower or harder to get. I don't know what it is, like whether it's flashing light paralysis or something like that, <laughs> but I just cannot shoot them to save myself. I don't know if anyone else experienced that when they, when they play that game or have it on other tables that that happens to, but I, it's just really, really hard for me to get a shot on, um, on that table when I'm in modes. So 
uh, maybe I just need to suck less and play it more, right? Yeah, so I think uh, to any of our friends out there that uh, feel like doing this, confirming things for us, I'll probably do a visual check and see, but I don't know if I'm going to Photoshop anything and figure it out that way. Um, right. Compare, go to, use Medieval Madness, because I know, like I said, I know this is for a fact is different in Pinball FX3. Compare between, um, and you can pick either Pro Mode or Classic, it doesn't matter, they both have the exact same flipper angle, uh, compared to the Arcade Mode. Um, and you'll see mm. a noticeable difference in the flipper angle. See what the flipper angle is for that, and see which flipper angle then they decided to choose for pinball effects. Are they using the arcade flipper angle, or are they using the called the Williams flipper angle? You know, the the the, the pro yeah. flipper angle. I I'm almost positive they're using the arcade, which is the same angle that pinball arcade used. And I mm. didn't. Yes, it makes the game playable and extended, but that's the problem, is it makes it go extended, and it's not what the flippers are like if you're playing on a real table. No, it's not. Because um, I just specifically remember playing, hey, roller games, yeah, I love mentioning it, where literally the flipper angle, well, I'm going to get it to my camera, was like about there, as opposed to yeah. about there. And it, yeah. I mean, it was like almost flat, and I was like, are you kidding me? There was like... Zero chance of catching the ball unless you could actually do a live catch. Um, and sometimes, yeah, like you'd have to compare flipper angles on other eras of that table because sometimes operators would use the wrong length oh, plunger and stuff like that. So in some cases, there were mechanical problems there that would have caused the flippers to be that shallow. But I do remember on that era because that was around the same era as. A mouse and round and stuff like that yeah it's like um, 90 wait I, was it one of those showcase back boxes with the speakers on the top no like uh dr dude and all those no it wasn't no. it was like a no because it's not belly it's williams so oh yeah right that was a belly was, thing i believe it? it was a, a ni 1990 91 maybe Okay, so it's games? towards the end of the System 11 era and rolling into the WPC era. Yeah, because I specifically remember the arcade that I worked at that had it um, within a month of me starting there. Uh, Funhouse came out. Oh, okay, yeah. So. Okay. Just so, to... yes, some t look, if that was brand new out of the box and they got it and the flippers were like that, then, you know. It definitely that's stock um but you know memories can fade oh over time. absolutely yeah so i think that over the generations um they've standardized flipper mechs and standardized plunger links but there definitely were some variations in the early days when games were shipping there were like discrete plunger parts uh for some of those mechanisms and before they really standardized it to the wpc flipper mechs um, there are all sorts of different mechanisms that the flippers used as well, like uh, that changed the way the flippers behaved. So yeah, you really anything before the WPC era, so like White Water, um, Twilight Zone, all those ones, um, was a bit of the Wild West with how flipper mechanisms worked. Uh, like even on some of the games like Black uh, Black Pyramid and that era of Belly Game. They, they completely redesigned the slingshots. So they're on a slide mechanism, not a, a lever mechanism. So the whole mechanism will actually linearly slide it out, not kicked like this. Mm. So, you know, they were doing all these sort of like testing different mechanisms and different flipper uh, mechanisms to see which ones held up better. Um, and they, they sit on the WPC ones now, which, um, yeah, makes it hard to compare. But... Um, yeah, uh, head over to Discord. Let us know if you care one way or the other. If you're like, I'm fine with this, or if you're uh, raising hell and being like, no, damn it, you need to put in these other flippers. Um, and then uh, that's another question we're going to have for Mel next time we talk to him is, you know, is this a conscious decision? Is this something that, uh, uh, you know, through their data testing and mining, uh, is this what Zen came up with? Is going, hey, this is what people are most comfortable playing and want to play as opposed mm. to spending whatever extra time doing the tuning uh, for having a very minor amount of people wanting. Um, yeah, give us give us the uh, the old word of what you think about that. Um, yep. 
Beyond that, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that uh, I think we've covered every topic that we were hoping for today. I think we have. Yeah, we've we've really done it. It's been a bit of a longer show, but we we had you know, lots of things. This is the problem when we play games. <laughs> they always goes longer, particularly My Little Pony. Sorry about that. Yes. <laughs> Oops. Uh, or, oh, well. or as you would say, oh. Um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes. Let's never do that again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Agreed. So obviously next uh, next month uh, we're going to be getting a Williams title. That's the uh, the roadmap, and then after that we're getting uh, another block of tables. I'm assuming that's going to be the remainder of the Zen Originals. Yeah. Um, something tells me the Marvel Collection is going to save for actual console release. I suspect so. Yeah. Um, yeah. And who knows? Maybe we'll get yet another one of these. Uh, Pinball Party so, t- exclusive. Tables. Obviously, the licensing is uh, wearing off uh, for exclusivity period. Um, yep. So we'll see what happens on that front too. Uh, which, mm. I mean, granted, these are going to be new tables for a lot of people who either yeah, are Android-based or never bothered doing the Pinball Party. Yeah, well, I would have never been able to touch these tables in, unless I was in the, the beta yeah. forum because I just don't have iOS. So, yeah. yeah, it will be brand new for some. Uh, yeah. So next time mm. we'll be back uh, talking about all the usuals. Pro- probably yes, stuff and things, lots of that. Till then, folks. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>